Retiring in America today, you'd better be prepared because honestly, we have a retirement crisis staring us right in the face. People are thinking they've got plenty of money to retire and they're astounded at what they don't have. So let's talk about what's going on in America. It is absolutely astounding to me that people can retire without having any money. It's hard to imagine that over 55% of Americans retiring today are retiring with less than $10,000. They have their, had their entire life to save money and they have been able to save less than $10,000. And those that are saving, their nest egg is less than a hundred grand. A hundred thousand dollars. Now I'm going to tell you, a hundred thousand dollars does seem like it's a lot of money. A hundred grand is nothing, and it's nice to say, Believe me, I I, I I know. So when you have a paycheck coming in, Uncle Sam's your partner. So you maybe you're losing thirty or forty percent of your income. Plus you got the kids. You got re, you've got schooling to take care of. They got all kinds of pressures. You got house payments and car payments, insurance, and on top of that, you need to save some money. It's very very hard to do. You're never ever going to be able to save your way to wealth. You have to invest. You have to find an investment vehicle that's going to work for you. And these investment vehicles change. You know, Social Security came out in the 30s. The big joke was that when you turn 65 years old, you're going to start getting some benefits. It's going to help your family. Your widows would be having some benefits. But here's the deal. Most people didn't live to be 65 years old. It wasn't until the 70s and 80s where life expectancy started to expand and people started actually getting to the age that they could actually collect. And now people are retiring at 62. They're not even going to full retirement age and 26 million Americans. This is astounding. 26 million Americans that are retired, a full 40%, the only income they receive for the entire month is Social Security. Now, Social Security feeds and funds 65 million and 26 million of those people. This is the only money they're going to get all month. Check written by Social Security for the average benefit is $1,543 a month. Now, if your husband and wife are married, your combined benefits are right at $2,340. That's only good until one of you die. If one of you die, you're gonna go to the highest of the two, but you're gonna lose that other benefit. So you're gonna typically lose, you know, a third of what you make is going to go out the window and you're going to lose that. Now here's the other travesty is that the government says, oh, the average net worth of a 55 to 64 year old in 2020 was a million one hundred seventy-five thousand. That meant that the average 55 year old in America was a millionaire. Well, that's not true. The average 55 to 64 year old in America is not a millionaire. We just have an average that gets screwed by the uh, arithmetic because you put all these high net worth individuals that have billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars and they throw the statistics off. So if you go to the median, which is the number in the middle where most people are at, that's in the middle of the pile, gives a whole different picture. We're looking at $212,000 as the average net worth of an American between 55 and 64. You can't retire on $212,000, I'm going to tell you that right now. And the same thing happens when we go to the 401ks and to your IRAs and your retirement accounts. They say the average is $182,000. Well, that's from all the corporate people that get millions and millions and millions of dollars for bonuses. They put it into the retirement account because they're untaxed and it throws the arithmetic off. When you get down to the median, the median amount, it's only $62,000. 62000 is nothing. It's literally nothing. Now, 4% of $62,000 is less than $2,500 a year, about $210 a month. And this is what you're supposed to live on. And I put this in because $53,500 is the goal for uh, average American that's pre-tax. You're going to pay tax on your Social Security. So if you're getting $53,500, Uncle Sam's going to want a piece of that. So you have to factor that in. You need lots and lots of income. More than you think you're going to need, you're going to have to have. Which brings us back to what they call a three-legged stool, which is just talking about the difference in uh, income streams. You should have at least three income streams for yourself. The mainstay, of course, is Social Security. And you're going to need $53,500 pre-tax. That's the goal. 
But if you're a high wage earner, you're gonna to have to get at least 70 to 80% of pre-retirement in income streams. So that's, that's social security and whatever other income streams you have, have to add up to at least 53,500 pre-tax. And you probably have another 10 or $15,000 in tax, which drives it up almost to $70,000. You have to have $70,000 in passive income coming into you to maintain your lifestyle. Now, a lot of pensions and annuities are in trouble. The only thing that I would say is not in trouble is the federal government. They're gonna keep paying their, their uh, uh, pensions. Now, I'm telling you this because you are going to live a lot longer than you think you are. Now, statistically, if you make it to 65 years old, the odds are you're gonna make it a 17 to 19 years longer if you're a male and over 20 to 22 years if you're a female. So if you are 65 retiring, odds are you're gonna have at least 17 years in retirement. So if you're on a 4% rule and you're living 40 years, that means that your money ran out 10 years earlier. Who wants to be, on a, who wants to be broke when you're 90 years old? It's not gonna be fun. We don't want to do that. We want to be. We want to be having some good times. And here's the big culprit. We're gonna talk about inflation. Now we've had benign inflation for the last 20 years. Back to 2001, we went 20 years, less than two percent. It destroyed purchasing power by 53 percent in benign inflation. Producer prices are up 12 and a half percent in the first five months of 2021. That means that the average person lost 12 and a half percent of their wages in the first five and a month of this year because of inflation. Now, is it benign inflation? I'm not even sure what benign inflation is. Is it transitory? What's transitory? You know, if it, we're looking at a 30 or 40 year picture, if you only have uh, inflation for four years, that could be transitory. But four years of inflation would wipe out your portfolio. You'd be living like a pauper. You could lose 20, 30, 40, 50% of your purchasing power. That'd be a travesty. Now, the only thing that I can think as an asset is going to be single family homes that you can purchase because they're very conservative. You can rent them out all the time. And here's the good thing about them is that they are huge inflation hedges. So to give you a protection two ways, if you're renting them out, the rents go up with inflation or more. If you're in organic growth markets like Florida, Texas, and Arizona, those are organic growth markets where people are actually moving to them. They're creating wealth there. Business is good. People want to go there and they're causing prices to go up rather than just inflation. But even in a bad marketplace, these properties are going to maintain an inflationary hedge for you. Same with rents. Rents are going to go up with inflation or a little bit above and the value of the properties will go up. So your purchasing power can be maintained and protected. This is where I get to get a big thumbs up if you like my videos. If you like them, please subscribe. It really makes our, our marketing uh, so much easier. Now, these are the two books that I've written, How to Create a Real Estate Money Machine. That is my business plan. Hopefully it motivates you and real estate investing for beginners will hopefully give you a foundation so that you can go out and buy some properties for yourself. You know, two is gonna make a big difference. 10 is gonna make your life really, really nice. And you can easily do that. You can get 20, 30, or 40 if, if you want to. And get yourself a good property manager. They'll take care of absolutely everything for you. You won't be the landlord. You'll just be the investor, and you'll get a check each and every month. My back office is run by uh, West USA Realty. I'm licensed uh, with uh, Arizona as a uh, in, in the real estate business. We're licensed real estate agents. We'll help you in any way possible. We can easily get ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in income from rentals on top of social security and give you a great life. That's what you're looking for. So if I can help, it's Michael at michaelbuild.com. My best.